Hello and welcome to Children's Church of Crossroads Baptist Church. Today we're going to continue our lessons about Abraham, so we're going to start off by singing Father Abraham. Kelly? singing along with us. Now let's go ahead and say our memory verses together and I, I hope you've been working on these because it's so important that we hide God's word in our heart and we have that exciting drawing coming up for our electric Bible at two o'clock this afternoon but let's go ahead and say this together. John 3, 3 1 through 8. eight. There, there was, was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? 
Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh or whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Thank you, and I hope that you are hiding God's word in your heart. Now, kids, it's time for a lesson from God's Word, and we're going to be in Genesis 18 today, talking about Abraham and reviewing Lesson 9 in your handbook on pages 72 and 73, Abraham, the friend of God. But let's go ahead and pray, and then we'll get right into the lesson. Dear Jesus, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for the beautiful weather you've given us. I thank you for all the many, many things that you've given us that we don't deserve, and I pray that you be with all the boys and girls wherever they are. Just please keep them healthy and safe and help them to know how much you love and care about them. And please give me the words to speak today and just help them to listen and to learn something from you. In your name I pray, amen. So like I said, we've been talking about Abraham. And before we start in Genesis 18, I would like just to read to you a verse from the New Testament found in James. James 2.23, and you can look it up later if you wish, but James 2.23 says, And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Now, friend, what exactly is a friend? Well, a friend is someone that you want to spend time with, maybe you want to have a sleepover with your friend, or you want to play with them on the playground at recess or sit by them at lunch or you know just talk to them and, and play fun games together go out to eat but here in James 2 verse 23 it calls Abraham the friend of God now now why does why was he the friend of God well it said Abraham believed God and it was count it was imputed unto him for righteousness so the fact that Abraham believed God made him the friend of God. So let's go ahead and look in Genesis 18 and, and read in our story what God did because Abraham was his friend. So verse or Genesis 18 verses 1 and 2 say, And the Lord appeared unto him in the plain, plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day, and he looked up his eyes and looked, and three men stood by him, and when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. So here we see Abraham was hanging out of his tent and three men appeared to him. And guess what? One was the Lord and the other two were angels. And Abraham could tell there was something very special about these men. So Abraham wanted to make them lunch and a good meal. So um, he goes out and has a young calf killed and he has his wife Sarah whip up some bread and he gets some butter for the bread and some milk and they have this nice meal together. Now I have a question for you. If, if the Lord came and visited you, what would you make for the Lord to eat with you? Maybe you would make some nice juicy steaks or some grilled, grilled chicken or chicken nuggets or mac and cheese. But if the Lord came to visit you, what would you want to eat with the Lord? Hmm. Well, here we see Abraham made some meat and bread and butter and milk, and they had this nice meal together. And after they were done eating, the Lord had some good news for Abraham. So they're done eating their meal, and the Lord says, guess what? Your wife, Sarah, she's going to have a baby. Let's go ahead and read in Genesis 18, verse 10. It says, and he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. So here is the good news that the Lord wanted to come and tell Abraham 
His wife, Sarah, is going to have a baby. Now, Sarah is 90 years old. Do women that are 90 years old usually have a baby? Well, no, no. And Sarah heard it from the back and she laughed. <laughs> she laughed inside herself and she thought this was crazy. But I love what it says in verse 14 here. It says, is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life and Sarah shall have a son. So here we learn an amazing truth that nothing is too hard for the Lord. And even though Sarah was 90, can she still have a baby? Well, if the Lord wants her to, yes, she can. And we might have really hard things going on in our life, but guess what? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Maybe it seems impossible, um, but the Lord has got this because nothing, nothing is too hard for the Lord. So that was the good news that was given to Abraham. Now, the bad news, well, if we look on, the men after the meal, they went, went for a little walk. Now, maybe you've been going for lots of walks now that you're stuck at home quite a bit. I always like to go for walks. I just really enjoy them. But the men, they go on a walk. Now, the two angels, they went ahead walking and they went ahead and went to Sodom. But the Lord stayed back because the Lord wanted to tell Abraham another piece of news here. Now, the Lord tells Abraham that he is going to destroy Sodom. The people of Sodom have been living very wickedly, which we already kind of went over that. Remember, Lot pitched his tents toward Sodom, and now actually he's moved into Sodom. But the town of Sodom is a very wicked, wicked city. And the Lord says, hey, Abraham, I'm going to destroy Sodom. And Abraham replied with a question in verse 23 of chapter 18 it says and Abraham drew near and said wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked so are you going to destroy the righteous people with the wicked people and he goes on to talk to the Lord and he says Lord if there are 50 50 righteous people in Sodom will you destroy it if there are 45 if there are 30 if there are 20 if there are 10 righteous people in Sodom will you destroy it and the Lord says nope I won't destroy it if there are 10 righteous people. And Abraham was probably thinking, hmm, I know my nephew Lot moved into Sodom. Lot has a wife. They have four daughters. Two of their daughters have husbands. So that's eight people. So surely there are 10 righteous people living in Sodom. And we'll find out exactly what happens to Sodom next week. But here the Lord... Um, told Abraham, if there are 10 righteous people, I will not destroy it. And the main point I want you to get out of the lesson today is that Abraham was the friend of God. And because Abraham was the friend of God, the Lord wanted to come visit him and tell him these two pieces of news. We have the good news that Sarah was going to have a baby, but we also have the bad news that the Lord is going to destroy Sodom. And my question for you is, do you want to be the friend of God? I want to be the friend of God. I hope the Lord thinks of me as his friend. But how? How can we be the friend of the Lord? Well, first of all, we have to have the Lord living in our heart. So the first step to being the friend of God is to invite Jesus into your heart to live. It says in Romans, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that just means that you realize you are a sinner. You realize that your sin has a price that must be paid and Jesus paid the price with his blood on the cross and you just have to pray and say dear Jesus please come into my heart and live I accept you into my heart and life I accept your blood as payment for my sin and he will save you that's the first step into becoming the friend of God and then like we talked about earlier when you have a friend you want to spend time with them and do things with them well we can spend time with God by spending time reading his word. This helps us get to know our friend. This helps us get to know the mind of God. God, this is the mind of God in here. And that helps us know that. So we get to know him by reading his word, by praying and talking to him. I'm sure you talk to your friends. So praying is talking to God. So we can become God's friend by inviting him into our heart, by reading his word and by praying with him. And I hope that you wanna be God's friend and I hope that that has been a blessing to you.